Are you serious? Here we go. It's time for all the villagers to take your meds. It's 9 o'clock. It's here we go. It's Thursday night prime time. Live, 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 live with Mike from around the world. There's already 500 people here already. So we're glad you're with us tonight. Make room, though, as there's many more on their way. And we can't stop it. We just can't stop it. And we're going to let Mike from around the world tell us why not and just how bad it will be and just how much time do we have left. Are you serious? But uh, first, let's start real fast with www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com. Chances are you've been here before. The chaos in the market, the prices of the oil, the end, the fluctuation of the stock markets, and just when you thought it was safe, and interest rates were rising. New threats come out of nowhere, and tensions are boiling over from Asia to Europe. Adaptation is key here to safeguarding your wealth. You might you may have considered gold before. It is a biblical currency. And it's not speculation, but it's insurance. And right now, you need some insurance. You need to make sure you have diversified some of your retirement funds and savings. Noble Gold Investments has been protecting investors from disasters for years with precious metals. So if you're worried, it might be time to take a fresh look at gold and silver. Gold is a proven safe haven shield for your portfolio and helps balance out against uncertainty. If it helps, go to noblegoldinvestment.com or www.pastorpaulgold.com, and they're offering this three ounces of pure silver. This is called the Silver American Virtue Coin. It's a beautiful coin. It comes in this wonderful case, and they'll give it to you for free if you set up a new IRA this month. If you open up with Noble Gold Investments, an IRA, or roll over that 401k, you can claim your coin today. Just go right now to www.pastorpaulgold.com or pick up the phone and call them at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. And tell them that Pastor Paul Begley sent you there all right you definitely want to do that and I'll, I'll, I'll don't forget also you can still get your ticket for invasion america okay there's no dvds on this webinar you have to get the ticket and watch it we're not going to do dvds it's just too big it's just uh, there's 15 speakers and 13 presentations just get the ticket and enjoy it and watch it and uh you'll have you get to keep it for a year and you can watch it over and over again take notes prepare for the things that are coming. Great to see everybody here tonight. Mike from around the world is going to join us tonight, so it's going to be a very powerful broadcast, no question about it. We're looking forward to asking him some serious questions. Um, It's not going to get better, okay? There are certain things that, guys, we just, look, we can't stop it. There's something coming to this planet that we cannot stop. We can do all the technology. We can get all the AIs working on it. We can do whatever we want to do, but we can't stop it. And we're going to get Mike around the world to help us understand that. Uh, one thing I want to tell you about is we have a, a storm that we can't stop either. It's a, In the East Coast, there's a storm coming. It's going to bring strong winds, soaking rain, and some snow. Now, this is the half the country. Okay, I mean, literally, the, the east is facing rain, wind, and snow from an upcoming storm. The storm system organizing this week will bring multiple impacts to the part of the east uh, coast, half the nation, really, all the way from Maine to the tip of Florida, all the way across uh, through, you know, the, the, the Midwest, all the way across Ohio, Indiana, all the way to Illinois, all the way into Iowa, and all the way down um, as far as southern Texas. I mean, this is a rain, snow, miserable three days of uh, a storm surge upon this nation. Uh, The storm will arrive Saturday night and will continue until Monday night. 
Potentially damaging winds are also possible for some portions of the east uh, half of the nation. A soaking rain is expected for just about everybody, for millions of us. And um, it's, it's really going to be ugly. And, and it's going to be cold, rainy, cold, uh, some sleet and snow and, and high winds and just some really, really bad kind of miserable type uh, weather. And, and when you start talking about 50 mile hour winds and cold rain, and it's just not nice. It's just really not nice. But I, I wanted to get out of the way before the preacher man van heads out to uh, the five states that we're going to be in and visiting folks uh, in eight different cities in five states. So get it, clear it all out, get it out of the way because uh, we can't stop it. We can't stop it. So we've just got to deal with it. But that's not the, the, that's not the main story here tonight. Uh, we are going to see, and really, there's going to be some winds 50 miles an hour in parts of southeast New England. Um, Washington, D.C., you're going to see 25 to 30 mile an hour uh, winds. Boston, same thing. New York City, same thing. Boston might even be 35 to 40 miles per hour. And it's, it's really going to be wicked, okay? So we're just going to keep an eye on it, and everybody just uh, – Hold, hold on and, and, and be careful out there and, and bundle up and just know that, you know, here we are. It's December. But we can't stop it. There's, uh, we just can't. And that's not the only thing we can't stop. Um, we're going to talk about something here that Mike from around the world is going to be on with us. We're going to talk to him about a lot of stuff tonight that is happening. Um, but I've been, I've been thinking... You know, okay, Mike said the sun is going to, okay, do this, like, implosion thing. And so I did some research, and um, here's what I found out. The existence of an elusive celestial body known as Planet X has been a topic of debate and speculation within the scientific community and among enthusiasts. Now, some theories suggest that if such a planet were to exist and does exist and approach our solar system, it could potentially have significant effects on the sun. Now, this report explores two hypothetical scenarios, the possibility of Planet X causing the sun to implode and the idea that it might draw hydrogen photons from the sun like this. Okay. I mean, that's just what? That's why you got to have a big cup of coffee tonight. Have you guys got your coffee? Mike, from South Bay Mike got me this. Are you serious? This is a big old cup of Joe, baby. I mean, this is huge. I want to thank you, Mike, for sending this my way. South Bay Mike out of California. Oh, by the way, South Bay Mike is a great, great golfer. Man, that guy's like almost pro. Um, uh, oh, anyway, let me read on. Um, and a great tattoo artist, too, matter of fact. A tremendous. Loves the Lord, and he's really good, really good. Just look him up, South Bay Mike. You'll, you'll, know, what you, you'll know who he is. Look him up. The concept, though, of the ninth planet, often referred to as Planet X, gained attention as astronomers um, observed particular gravitational anomalies or orbital irregularities in the outer reaches of the solar system. And while the existence of such a planet remains unconfirmed by the scientific community, the potential consequences of its presence have sparked intriguing theories. Scenario number one. One speculative theory proposes that the gravitational influence of Planet X could trigger a chain reaction leading to the implosion of the sun the, fo- the proponents of this ideal suggest that as planet X approaches, its gravitational force could disrupt the delicate balance between the sun's gravitational pull and the outward pressure from nuclear fusion reactions in its core. Now, th- I found that real significant because, you know, and then that's why I'm concerned about Sin, you know, sin. What can I do about sin? Well, you, you can't do a whole lot about sin um, right now because one thing, it's 
it's it's it, what are you going to do? CERN is CERN. And if CERN decides to burn, then what have we learned? Well, this question about we can't stop it is really was raised by Mike from around the world. And we're going to be finding out uh, more information tonight about this specifically because there are researchers at NASA and in other parts, even DARPA is involved in the uh, quest for trying to understand, NASA has for a long time, for the quest on how to deal with this thing. And can it be dealt with? I mean, have we come to the point of no return? Well, God's in control of everything. And there is scripture on this. And so I thought I would pick up a Bible just for a moment before I get into Russia and and Saudi Arabia and the earthquakes and the catastrophic events going on all over the world right now. I mean, it's crazy. I wanted to read just a few verses from 2 Peter chapter 3. And the Bible says this in verse 8. This is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. You, we can't stop it. It will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. We can't stop it. So if Apostle Peter, 2,000 years ago, writes this in the scripture, who... You say, well, where in the world did he get his scientific information to make such a proclamation? Well, he's the head of the church, the early church. He was the the, the apostle that Christ certainly leaned on more than anyone else. He walked with the Lord. He talked with the Lord. Uh, he, He walked on the water with the Lord. Believe me, he had enough time. To, spend, to, to have some conversations about how the end of time will come, what will happen to this planet, and Jesus explained it to him, so he writes it for us in his epistle letter in 2 Peter chapter 3. And he says, this earth is going to, it's, it's, it, 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 it's going to become an inferno at some point. Now, there's a lot of prophecy. We're in the end times, but there's a lot of prophecy to be fulfilled, but it can be fulfilled quickly because he just told you one day with the Lord is the same as a thousand years and a thousand years a day. In other words, time doesn't really is irrelevant when it comes to prophetic events of God. Time is something we measure the rotations of our planet, the third rock from the sun around the, uh, the sun ball. But in God's mind, He's he's from the beginning, and he has no end. And time means nothing. He's even going to stop all time at some point when he declares that time shall be no more. So I'm telling you that we can't stop it. The prophecy is in process. And the scientists and the the individuals that are studying these things, they are... They are looking at it, but let me, I'm not going to stop here about the earth going to burn up and just leave you on fire. Let me finish a couple more verses. It says, see in them that all these things shall be dissolved. 2 Peter 3, verse 11. See in them that all these things should be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. I'm here to tell you 
that Peter wants us to know this thing is, you might as well understand it. Now, there's some prophecy that has to be fulfilled. We've got a war going on right now in the Middle East that's part of the prophetic uh, timeline of the return of Christ to Jerusalem. We still have a third temple that has to be built. We still have to have an Antichrist rise up and a seven-year tribulation period where the Antichrist halfway through that walks into the temple of God before the worshipers of God and declares he's God. We're already seeing the anti-Semitism off the charts around the globe. I, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm still stunned. There's a, there's, there's a few of these uh, teachers, preachers, YouTube personalities, whatever you want to call them, that all they do, you can, go, you can go check them out on their YouTube channel or go to Twitter or go where, you know, their website or wherever you want to go. And all they do, every video, every tweet, everything they do, and there's, there's a few of them, everything they do, every word they say seems like night and day. All they want to say, how much they hate the Jews. And so I'm just going to leave that right there. But the anti-Semitism is really growing if you look around the globe, which was actually prophesied to happen. But uh, we can't stop it. It's part of the prophecy. Now I want to read something here that's going on. Mike from the world is going to join us tonight. Russia and Saudi Arabia urged all OPEC powers to join oil cuts. Check this out, guys. This man, Russia, went to Saudi Arabia and met with Mohammed bin Salman. Now, what in the world? First of all, Russia, the, first of all, the, uh, there's several nations that Putin can't go to. He would be arrested under international law. And charged for war crimes and be sent to the Hague. But Saudi Arabia is not one of those. They're not part of that. They didn't sign that agreement. He couldn't even go to the BRIC uh, convention because the host country would have had to have arrested him. So this is a daring move, actually, by Vladimir Putin. But he went to Saudi Arabia, the world's two biggest oil exporters right now is Saudi Arabia and Russia. They met today and they called on all of OPEC members to join, sign an agreement on the output cuts for the good of the global economy only days after this fractious meeting of the Producers Club. Hours after Russian President Vladimir Putin went to Saudi Arabia in a hastily arranged visit to meet with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the Kremlin released a joint Russian-Saudi statement about the conclusion of their discussions. He barely had got there when it was released. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Russia, and other allies agreed last week to a new voluntary cuts of 2.2 million barrels per day, led by Saudi Arabia and Russia rolling over their voluntary cuts to 1.3 million. They released this, this news press release, and they were still meeting when they released it. They hadn't agreed to anything yet, but uh, Russia was already proclaiming this to the world. In the field of energy, the two sides commended the close cooperation between them and the successful efforts of OPEC countries in enhancing the stability of global oil markets and said that the statement released by the Kremlin, they stressed the importance of continuing this cooperation and the need for all participating countries to join OPEC and sign the agreement in a way that serves the interest of producers and consumers and supports the growth of the global economy. In other words, lock the price in at this high point it is right now. Slow down the production of oil to keep it up there if there or higher because this is the way Saudi Arabia and Russia make most of their income for their nation. It's off the royalties or off the sale of oil. A Saudi state news agency said that the crown prince known as MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, and Putin had emphasized in their meeting the need for OPEC members to commit to the group's agreement. 
Oil market sources said that such an explicit public remark from the Kremlin and the kingdom about joining cuts appear to be an attempt to send a message to the rest of the members of OPEC who had not cut or not cut enough. In other words, they're still cranking out the oil, selling it as much as they can, and he's saying to them, you guys are causing the price of oil to go down, and that's cutting into the profits of Russia and Saudi Arabia. We need everybody to stop, slow down, and just only do so much and keep the price up there. So the biggest members of OPEC, excluded from the cuts in Iran, ex- excluded from the cuts is Iran, the economy of which has been under various U.S. sanctions since 1979. Um, but Iran is boosting production and hopes to reach about 3.6 million barrels a day by March 20th of next year. And after his return to Moscow from Saudi Arabia, Putin held talks with Iranian President uh, Rassi, Ibrahim Rassi, at the Kremlin, along with Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak and Defense Minister Sergei Shogu. Mystery still surrounds Putin's trip, though, to Saudi Arabia, and he also went to Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, on which he was escorted by four Russian fighter jets and it was not really immediately clear what particular issue was so important that Putin need to make this rare overseas trip. I think he needs to show himself as still relevant on the world stage. I think he wants to show that nobody's going to corner me and just lock me away and, and you know, in the Siberia somewhere and think I'm just going to sit up here and I can't travel and I can't meet with people and I can't go nowhere. So he's he's... Again, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, testosterone there, I think. I mean, he wants to be the world leader. He said he wants to lead the new world order. But so did President Xi. And so did Joe Biden, for that matter. Um, and then you got the you got the actual cabal that wants and is trying to lead the way. Okay. It's interesting. Those phones don't ring. That one's not supposed to ring. Are you serious? Don't do that. I'm in the middle of a show. <sighs> Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to keep an eye on this because I think this is very big. Got to ask, we got to ask the Mike around the world about what's going on here. And Mike's got to, I'm sure, going to have even more to add to this whole situation. There's no doubt about that. He'll have more to add to this situation, uh, certainly, in my opinion. Um, Wow. Welcome to the Salvation Station. We want to get as many people to understand the times we're living in and to give their, their life to Jesus Christ. It's the greatest decision you can ever make. I promise you, it's the best decision you will ever ever make i promise well russia again we said they met with uae so we have another report so um it was not immediately clear what putin who has rarely left russia since he started the war in ukraine intended to raise specifically about oil or geopolitics in this meeting with mohammed bin salman uh the de facto ruler of the world's largest crude uh, export exploration but the meeting with mbs as the prince is widely known, comes after a fall in oil prices despite a pledge by OPEC. I think that's what Russia was trying to say is, what's going on here, guys? Slow the production down. Keep the price up. What are you doing? So I think that's why he was going there. It's one of the reasons. He also said to Mohammed bin Salman, he said, you know, I invited you to come here and you canceled, so I just thought I'd just come here. And next time I'd like for you to come to see me. And... uh Ben Salman said, yeah, I'll do that. So um, maybe, uh, you know, Mohammed bin Salman's 38 years old, Putin's 71. It could have been like, young man, you need to, when I say come to here, you need to understand that's what I mean. He met with the uni- uni- I mean, the uh, United Arab Emirates. It was just kind of a meet and greet, and, 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 and you know, they had, a, they had a little tea, and they talked for a few minutes, and, it didn't last very long. It was not nothing came out of that one. I think he just wanted to prove 
that he can travel wherever he wants to when he wants to and send that message back to the world. Also, he wants to show that he's in control of the war in Ukraine. He's not worried about it. He's moving on to bigger and better things. And I also think it had something to do with Israel. Without question, he is concerned about what's going to happen with Israel. What's going to happen with Gaza? How are we going to protect the oil in the Middle East? Uh, should we, you know, because he, he's a, he's a big-time ally with Iran and China, and now he's trying to make a range, and, and Turkey to some degree, but, but Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, they're really over on the U.S. side. There's no doubt. They're, they're hanging with the United States when it comes to they, they, they buy uh, Saudi Arabia is the biggest purchaser of weapons from the United States in the world. Um, we buy a lot of their oil, which I don't know why. We could we could crank it out of Texas, but we don't. And and so but I think Putin just wants to say, I'm not shut out. I'm not shut out. And uh, uh and uh, so he made a, a major move there. Speaking of Israel, we do have to go there. Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu warned Beirut today that he could turn, he could turn, he warned Beirut he could turn it into Gaza if Lebanon's Hezbollah opens all out war on Israel. So here's the concern. And I talked to Bishop Larry Raglan about that today. It aired over on his YouTube channel tonight. And I told Larry, I said, Larry, Right now, Israel is entrenched in Gaza. They're, they're rooting these Hamas uh, uh, habitual terrorists, and they're rooting them out of there. They're, 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 they're wiping them out. They're going to flood them out. They're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're taking them down. They're entrenched in there, taking care of business. The concern they probably have is what if Hezbollah decides to unleash thousands of rockets, much more sophisticated than what Hamas had out of Gaza, upon the cities of Israel? Israel does have a significant amount of soldiers and equipment, and they've got the Iron Dome, and they've got the David Sling, and they've got all of those protections, but it's not enough for what these guys could send. They could overwhelm it. And they have a much stronger military than Hamas. They actually are a military. And so I think Israel, you know, if, if there was ever a moment that uh, Hezbollah could make their move, it's right now. So Netanyahu sent in a clear message to them. You don't even want to think about this. Because if you do, I will turn Beirut, Lebanon into what you're seeing I'm turning Gaza into um, Pastor Deception Begley. What part of this that I just uh, talked about is deception, uh, Eco? That's what I thought. Uh, and then, so Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is warning this, and the U.S. Treasury Department announced Thursday that it has sanctioned 13 individuals and entities responsible for providing tens of millions of dollars worth of foreign currency generated from the sale of equipment of Iranian commodities backed by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and Quds Force and the Houthis in Yemen. Through a complex network of exchange, houses, and companies in multiple jurisdictions, these persons under the auspices of the United States sanctioned Houthi and the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard financial facilitator Saeed al-Jamal serve as an important conduit through which Iranian money reaches the country's militant partners in Yemen. The Houthis continue to receive funding and support from Iran, and the result is unsurprising. Unprovoked attacks on civilian infrastructure and commercial shipping and disrupting marine time security and threatening international commercial trade under the Secretary of the Treasury for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Brian Nelson, who said the Treasury will continue to disrupt the financial facilitation and the procurement 
networks that enable these destabilizing activities. The sanctions come after three commercial vessels were attacked in the Red Sea on Sunday by the Houthi rebels, prompting a U.S. warship to shoot down multiple drones headed toward them in a development that could signify a serious escalation in a series of marine time attacks in the Middle East linked to the Israeli-Hamas war. The USS Kearney, also in the southern Red Sea, just north of the Bab al-Manbab Strait, when it shot down three Houthi drones headed in its direction, the U.S. official told Fox News, adding that the action was taken in self-defense. The drones were launched from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. So, in other words, the Houthis are still doing what they're supposed to do, and that is wreck havoc on the sea. You know, the Bible prophesied that there'd be, uh, there'd be uh, the sea cannot be quieted for their sorrow on the sea. It was talking about attacks that would come up on Israel during the times uh, that even Damascus could be destroyed. So these prophecies are really, literally right out of the pages of the Old Testament prophets, uh, uh, whether it be Isaiah chapter 17 and the destruction of Damascus, or it could be Jeremiah 49 uh, verses 23 through 28 that has to deal with Damascus or the same chapter, Jeremiah 49, I think it's 34 through 39, it has to do with the, the overwhelming destruction of Elam or Iran. And then we can read about Ezekiel 38 and then 39, how that those who attack Israel will be destroyed. So we're watching prophecy. Absolutely. Nobody can doubt this. We're in in times. And we can't stop it. We can't stop the anti-Semitism. We can't stop the hatred toward Jerusalem. We can't stop the wars and rumors of wars. We can't stop it. We can't stop the sun from imploding. We can't stop the solar flares from releasing. We can't stop the earthquakes from uh, breaking open. We can't stop Mount Merapi from exploding or Iceland from erupting. We can't stop Planet X from wrecking havoc in the cosmos. We can't stop Apophis that's on its way. We can't change any of this, but we can prepare for all of it. I believe that. I'll be right back. Get some more coffee. I believe Mike from around the world is going to be with us tonight. Oh, my. We've got contagions. Did you hear about the 100-day cough sweeping Britain and the dengue fever? A man Wrigley lived in that White House down the street where I grew up. Mama used to send me over with things. We struck a friendship up. I spent a lot of long summers out on his old porch swing. Says he was in the war and in the Navy. Lost his wife, lost his baby. Broke down and asked him one time, how'd you keep from going crazy? He said, I'll see my wife and son in just a little while. I asked him what he meant. He looked at me and he smiles and raised my hands. I bow my head. I'm finding more and more truth in the words written in red. They tell me that there's more to life than just what I can see. Later, I was off to college, talking to my mom on the phone one night, getting all caught up on all the gossip, the ins and outs of small town life. She said, oh, by the way, son, old man Wrigley died. 
Later on that night I laid there thinking back Thought about a couple long lost summers I didn't know whether to cry or laugh If there was ever anybody who deserved a ticket To the other side It would be that sweet old man yes. Look me in the eyes and I'll raise my hand. Oh, yes! I bow my head. I'm finding more and more truth in the words written in red. They tell me that there's more to life than just what I can see. I can't quote the book, the chapter. Think about that. But you can't tell me it all ends in a slow ride in a hearse. Oh, no. You know I'm more and more convinced the longer that I live. Aerospace. Yes, it can't be. No, it can't be. No, it can't be all there is. I'll raise my hand. what I can see Oh, I believe mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. I, I believe, believe. I believe How many people believe out there tonight? How many are believers? How many believers we got out there? Oh, I believe. Praise God. I believe. <laughs> I believe. I Sheep Dog and Troy Turner and Jesus Freak, Barbara Stone and Cindy and Maria and Jerry and Connie, Dillard, got a lot of believers, and Mary and Patricia and George and Holly and Rebecca, Pauline, Cheryl, they're going too fast now, Jeannie, Mary, Leonard, all of you, God bless all of you, are you, are you serious? Mike from the world is going to join us tonight. Uh, before I get into this highly contagious part of the show, because there's a couple things really concerning me. Revelation 9-11, our brand new book's coming out April 2nd. You guys know it. It's already, they're pre-selling it over there at Amazon.com. My uh, publisher is Salem Publishing or Regency. I know they're pretty big. They, I, I'm really impressed that they really wanted to to uh, publish this book. Uh, my Co-author is Troy Anderson. He's a Pulitzer Prize nominated, nominated journalist and already has four number one bestsellers. He said, hey, let's team up and write this because when God gave me this revelation, this dream, and told me to go write the book, I, what, all, what I saw was this, Revelation 9-11, just huge letters. It was hanging. It was, it was suspended. It was in the air when I woke up in my bed in July of 2021, and I looked and I seen it. I said, Lord, what is it? And he said, it's about to happen. It's upon mankind. So I, 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 I shook my head, and I, and, I, and I fell to my knees, and I began to pray. And God began to reveal to me what was going to take place. And I, and then I went to the, the Bible and opened up Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, and began to read about the Apollyon coming out of the bottomless pit. If you want to, and then God showed us the demons that are going to be released. This event has never happened. It's not happened yet. It was. It's in the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 11. It has not happened yet. But God spoke to me and said, it's about to happen. Write the book. And so when we started studying about all the different demons being released, 
God began to show us all the different demonic agendas that's being pushed upon humanity right now. And these agendas will be fuel injected when Apollyon emerges from the abyss. So you want to get the book, and here's what I've been telling people. You can pre-order it right now. They're going to ship them all out on April 2nd. Help us. I just looked uh, a few minutes ago. We were uh, number 331 on the prophecy chart um, um, earlier this morning. I, I mentioned it, just kind of mentioned it, and uh, I looked again this afternoon, and it said we were number 55. Um, we've went as high as um, number two back in uh, September. We went as high as number two, and on new release, uh, prophecy books being released by Amazon, we were the number one brand new release for five straight days. But, of course, you know, it, it, there's peaks and valleys. So if you haven't bought it, if you haven't had a chance to get your order, your copy of it, go to Amazon.com and find Revelation 911 and, uh, and get your copy. And as I've been telling folks, you're not going to want to just get one copy. I can tell you right now, it's my life's work in here, two years of work with Troy Anderson. 40 years of ministry, two years of research and work. It is my life's work. This, this, this is my message to the world of the coming of Jesus Christ. I even put the plan of salvation and, and lead people to Christ at the end of the book. Here's what I'm saying. You, want, you, want, you don't want just one. Because when you read it, you're going to want to give it to some of the most precious people in your life. And they'll never give it back. So here's what you want to do. You want to order five. You want to order five while they're still hardback. Because they'll, they'll, they'll go to paperback after a while. But they're hardback right now. You want to get five of them. One will be yours to keep forever. That's yours. The other four you're going to give away to some of the most precious people you know. Who you are dying. And you've been trying to get to understand prophecy and try to understand end times. And you're going to give it to them as a gift. And they're going to read it. And some of them are going to get saved from the book, just like how Lindsay's book went out and many lives changed. So I'm just saying this today. You're going to hear me say it more again. And soon I'll be on different podcasts and television shows and different, and different things I'll be doing uh, as we get closer to April 2nd. But I want to talk to my people right here, my people, because my people understand prophecy and the end times. And they understand how important it is to get, to get their own family members and friends to understand it. Uh, that's right, Jose. Order five. Matter of fact, order ten if you've got a big family. I'm not playing around. You've got, this will be better than any track you ever handed out. You can't sit down and talk to some of your family members about the end times because they won't listen to you. They think you're crazy. Just give them the book. Tell them to read it. Say, so just read this. Tell me what you think. It will change their life. Um, let's go here quickly. Highly contagious and potentially lethal 100-day cough is sweeping Britain and soon to affect the world. Guys, this is... I'm, I, I dread this. I mean, I'm just telling you right now, I don't like this. I don't like it. Um, this is a bacterial infection. 100-day cough. What? It's highly contagious. No, this ain't the white lung. This isn't COVID 2.20. This is different now. So that's what I'm saying. We're living in a time now when the plagues... We can't stop it. Jesus said there'll be earthquakes. He said, look, there's going to be wars, rumors of wars, false Christ, false prophets are going to come. You're going to see all kinds of apocalyptic events, including plagues, pestilences, diseases, earthquakes. Look, and, and you can't stop it. But you can pray. You can't stop it as a pandemic, but you can pray 
Psalms 91 over your body, over your family. You can plead the blood of Jesus to help protect you from the times that we're in. You can't stop the pandemic or this bacterial infection. You can't. You and I can't stop it spreading the globe. But we can pray that it stops at the door of our home by praying Psalms chapter 91. Uh, the bacterial infection starts with symptoms similar to a cold but can leave coughing fits that last for three months, 100 days. Health experts have issued a warning about this highly contagious disease known as the 100-day cough. Literally, people coughing their heads off. The bacterial infection, which has seen a 250% increase in cases, starts with like a cold, but turns into severe coughing fits for three months. The outbreak of whooping cough, also known as pertussis, and the 100-day cough, due to its long-lasting symptoms, has tripled in cases this year. So it's like the whooping cough, but it's not, it's not officially the whooping cough. It's, but it's very similar. It's worse. You cough longer. You cough harder. You get more sicker. And it's highly more contagious. Where'd this thing come from? Who created this thing? What lab did this sneak out of? Are you serious? Professor Helen Bedford, an expert in child public health at the University of College of London, said, as expected, we are now seeing cases of this type of wolfing cough. It's increasing, so it's a vital that pregnant women ensure that they get vaccinated to protect their babies. I'm not uh, sure about all that. I, But the bacterial infection affects the lungs and the throat, spreads easily, can sometimes cause serious problems. And so, of course, they're telling you what they think you should do to protect yourself. I doubt it, but I'm not, in, I'm not, uh, I'm not medically inclined to tell you what to do. But I will say this. I will report that it is bad. And it is affecting people, and we need to pray. Meanwhile, as temperatures rise on the planet, dengue fever infections keep surging around the globe. What? Scientists say that mosquito-transmitted viral infections could impact more regions thanks to the latest heat waves of climate change. The... um, In Bangladesh, 300,000 people have been infected with dengue fever. And, boys, you get, I'm telling you right now, you get sick, very sick with this, and people die. Uh, Matter of fact, our our evangelist in Pakistan, Atif Reza, uh, who we, we support, we have been supporting for years, and he has 38 or 39 children that he looks after in his orphanage. And we support them. Um, his wife got dengue fever, and she was in the hospital, I believe, for five days, and they had to, you know, they had to put her on heavy antibiotics, and we, we had to help uh, so that she could get the medical care because there's no such thing as insurance there. So we did, we helped, and uh, and she's back home, and I saw a picture of her. Heidi showed me, and she looked very weak and very sickly. This dengue fever is nothing to mess with, guys. Uh, This year, during the country's worst ever outbreak of mosquito-transmitted disease, by mid-November, the death toll was at 1,500, and hospitals were densely populated in South Asian country of Bangladesh were struggling to cope with the surge of patients overrunning. Neighboring India is also experiencing more and more outbreaks of the dengue fever. So is Sri Lanka, 60,000 cases of dengue have been reported just this year. And in Mexico, they've had now a 330% increase of dengue fever. So is Argentina and Bolivia and Brazil and Peru are also reporting very high amounts of infections. This disease is known as the breakbone fever due to its severe muscle and joint pains. It feels like it's breaking your bones. 
We can't stop it. It's also appearing far beyond its usual range in tropical and subtropical climates. Dozens of dengue fever cases not tied to travel abroad uh, have been reported across several European countries. They don't know how it's happening, including, that's what I'm saying. That's not because people are traveling there. It's just people are getting it. They're getting sick with the same thing in Italy, France, Spain, Chad, even in Crossroads of North and Central Africa experiencing the first known ever outbreaks of dengue. They've never had it before. And meanwhile, several U.S. states have announced locally acquired cases, in, especially in California. The explosive spread of dengue through the mosquitoes known for carrying the virus offers a case study in how climate change, they keep tying it because they... What they believe is because the, the temperatures are warming up on the planet, and that is true, that this is causing um, more of these mosquitoes to be to travel, I guess. But they're saying rising temperatures are helping to fuel the expansion of this potentially deadly threat. I still wonder just where it came from. But, you know, I, I just It's a different strain. I know what they're going to tell me. Paul, if this happens, strains change. I just, I don't know. Okay, now, and I believe that happens. I'm not stupid, but, you know, I'm just saying. I still can't help but be suspicious after Wuhan. How in the world can you not? How can you not? It would be irresponsible to not be suspicious, okay? Uh, anyway, I can move on. There's more important things also happening. I don't know if it's more important, but they're very important things. Staggering. This is this, this right here. 600 North Koreans vanished after being forcibly deported from China. What? Hundreds of North Koreans have reportedly vanished following this large-scale forced deportation by China after f- these people were fleeing the brutality of Kim Jong-un's regime. But the Seoul-based human rights organization out of South Korea says, Transitional Justice Working Group says that approximately 600 North Korean defectors have reportedly disappeared following a mass roundup. The group said nothing has been heard from these defectors since they were sent back to North Korea two months ago. The largest mass... Uh, deportation in years involving buses and vans guarded by Chinese security officials transporting the North Korean deportees from China's detention centers to the border crossing the North Korea. You know what this was like for these people? It's like being taken from hell to the lake of fire. To be in a Chinese detention center is like being in hell, period. And then if somebody said, oh, we're going to load you up and send you back to North Korea, who you left because you because this guy was so brutal, you imagine how he's going to treat you when you go back? That's why you haven't heard. That's why we have no absolute any information on these 600 people. United Nations won't say one thing about it. Listen to the crickets. The U.N., has never condemned China or North Korea for the human rights violations that they're doing upon the people. But, man, they have written chapters and chapters and chapters of resolutions against Israel. We can't stop this. We can't stop this. Can I get a song? I need another cup of coffee after that. I just do. I just, I just please, please, just please. Mike around the world's going to join us. Can he bring some sanity to this? I oh, the wandering preacher man. Yeah, the preacher man band's going to be going next week. Are you serious? Get some coffee and calm down. <laughs>
John spent his days walking up and down the Jordan, making a pathway for the Lord. He cried out to the people, a message of repentance, the kingdom, heaven in his words. Confess your sins, the time is right. Come on in and get baptized. Hug a mod today, folks. Hug one of the moderators. Yep, the Preacher Man van is going to be out next week, and we're going to be going to Marietta, Georgia on Tuesday evening, afternoon, whatever time it is. I don't know exactly where. They're going to post it on the uh, website this weekend. They're finalizing the locations. Some are coffee houses, some are restaurants, <clears throat> different locations. But we're going to go to Marietta, Georgia on Tuesday. We're going to Sevierville, Tennessee, which is just outside of Knoxville, over there near the Gatlin area there, Sevierville, Tennessee, on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, I think we're going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina for lunch, and um, Charlotte, North Carolina for dinner, and uh, then uh, uh, and then I'm doing Mike from around the world. From from somewhere, there in North Carolina, I think that's what I'm doing. Can't remember, <clears throat> but anyway, anyway, I'm, I know I'm going. It, it's uh, just just don't don't trust me. I'm going to Marriott, Georgia, Sevierville, Tennessee. I'm going to be going to Raleigh, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida. Did I miss anybody? I don't remember. But uh, anyway, they'll have it all together i want to meet you guys out there i i I'm, look i want to meet you and then this spring we're going to do another about another seven state trip and then uh then when, then later in the fall we're going to do another one 
So we're going to make our way, you know, to the – right now this is kind of the southeast. We're going to make our way over to the southwest. We're going to make our way up to, way up to the northeast. We're going to work into the Midwest. We're going to work our way through the plains. We're going to end up eventually out west. Yeah. So – and it's a lot of hard work to do that. And it's a lot of coordination that Heidi and Tara and them have to do to set it all up. Plus, i got to keep doing all the current events and everything that I normally do. Plus, Heidi has to keep making sure that all the people – the phone calls that come in for people who need prayer and the blankets that got to go out and all of the needs that need to be met of the ministry, all these things coordinated, and especially with a book coming out this spring and, and, and the demand, it's going to be very much. I pray that you guys will pray for my health and my capability to do it, okay? And uh, so I ask you to do that. Now, let me hurry. You guys know I, I did this earlier. There was a uh, insane... JFK Airport, a truck on the runway tipped over and spilled 10,000 gallons of jet fuel. What? How? Now, I'm just going to ask a question. Do we have any truck drivers out there? How do you jackknife a truck on a wide open runway? No mountains, no curves, no traffic, people stopping in front of you where you got maybe it would cause you the jackknife. How in the world do you spill 10,000 gallons of fuel? Highly flammable fuel. How in the world did this happen? Was somebody was somebody wasted? Was somebody was somebody clowning around? Was somebody clueless? I mean, I don't even think you could jackknife and and, and turn over a, a, a a tanker on a wide open runway if you tried I, I don't know how you could do it but that's not for me to oh and let me tell you something else i want to show you that that storm that's coming this weekend let me just show you this mike from the world will be here any minute multi-threat oh no that's supposed to be green oh no okay okay so everywhere that it's see-through that's it's going to really be bad Okay, because it's going to rain heavy. That's supposed to be green, okay? That's supposed to be green. Maybe I'll do it like that. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, you're going to get some snow. You're going to get some rain. It's going to really be bad, okay? So just stay awake. Uh, Everybody, half the country is just going to get inundated, including Florida, with high wind, rain, slush, snow, Get it all out of the way before the preacher man band goes and goes up into there. Get it all, go, get it out of the way, everybody. Take it all the way out of here. And it's supposed to last Saturday night, all day Sunday, all day Sunday night, Sunday night, all day Monday, Monday night. Okay, so let's get it out of here. But anyway, thank you, Heidi, for getting me that report. Oh, and here's this is huge. The U.S. is now through their complete support behind Guyana, and I was wrong. I was wrong. Write it down. Pastor Begley admits he was totally wrong when I said that Guyana was a country in Africa. Guyana is a country in South South America. Gu, uh, Guyana. <laughs> it has an extra. This is Guyana. Guyana is in South America. That's where Jim Jones went. And if you put another N in there, that's a country in Africa. Okay, so I so 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 I messed up a little bit. Cut me a break. Calm down. Don't don't lose your mind over it. But I was wrong. But uh, as I but I wasn't wrong about the fact that the rebels from Venezuela were were already encroaching upon their border and they were already shooting. There was already fighting going on. U.S. throws their weight behind. Guyana in the territorial dispute with Venezuela. So in other words, top U.S. diplomat Anthony Blinken reaffirmed support for Guyana's sovereignty as Venezuela threatens to annex half their nation from them. It's that uh, region there between the two nations. It's kind of been, for a while, Venezuela's been saying that's ours and Guyana's been saying, no, it's not. We've had it for, like, what, 150 years? You're not going to come and take it now. But see, here's what happened. Vladimir Putin set a precedent. He went into Ukraine and said, I'm taking Crimea, and I'm taking eastern Ukraine, and if you mess with me, I'm going to take the whole country. It belongs to me. It was ours, and I'm taking it. And President Xi of China blessed him, said, go ahead. 
because I'm about ready to take Taiwan. And now Venezuela's communist leader, Nicolas Maduro, is saying, you know what? I'm going to take that, that territory between Guyana and us that's full of oil and gold, and I'm taking that. So all of a sudden, everybody's just going to start taking stuff and uh, because they can, I guess. The United States says it's fully going to back Guyana. What's that mean? You're going to send troops? I don't know what that means. That's Joe Biden. But U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken reaffirmed it. Said we're going to stand with these guys. Okay. During the call, Blinken also urged for a peaceful resolution of the crisis. That's not going to happen. And Venezuelans said Sunday they voted. Venezuela voted, and they voted overwhelmingly to go ahead and go take it because this area is oil-rich and full of minerals of gold and silver mines. There's tons of it that no one's ever mined. So Venezuela, is they're, they're just absolute criminal thugs. This is what this... I'm not talking about the people of Venezuela because they're, they're, they're victims. But this regime, it started with Hugo Chavez. And he turned the, one of the best, most prosperous nations in all of South America, Venezuela, into a so- socialistic disaster. And now communism and now just thugs and thieves. And they're no different than the rest of the hoodlums that are running around this world. Oh, and... We would like for the United Nations Security Council to issue a very strong statement to Venezuela. Well, they can't. They ain't got time because they're they're writing six a day against Israel. They ain't got time. Guys, don't bother the UN. Please, don't bother them. Don't. Please don't. They're so overwhelmed right now. They're so busy. They work two days a week. And and then they got to have some time off. Please don't bother those guys. It don't matter if North Korea butchers people. It don't matter how many people are in the gulags in China. It doesn't matter how many people are slaughtered in nations around the world. Don't bother them. They're working on a resolution right now against Israel. Please don't bother them. It would be nice, they said, if they would send at least a little paper. I don't have any respect for the United Nations. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you do, you know, God bless you. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry. I don't have none. How can I? This is the joke of all jokes. This is the most corrupt, uh, uh, most uh, asinine organization that's ever been formed on this planet that God called Earth. This is full of criminals and crooks and tyrants, and it's insane. That we even and, and it's going to be the head of the beast. Do you realize that the new world order is going to form and they're going to come right out of the UN and we can't stop it? They're going to take this land from these people in Guyana and we can't stop it. They're going to butcher those 600 people in North Korea. They probably already did. We can't stop it. The sun's going to blow up eventually or, or implode or whatever. Planet X is going to finally wreak havoc up on the, the universe, and we can't stop it. But there's other things that we can't stop either. We can't stop the, the love of God. We can't, you can't stop hope. You cannot stop me from praying. You can pass laws. You can tell my kids they can't pray in school. And you can tell my grandkids they can't pray in school, but you can't stop them from praying. You can't stop God's grace. You cannot stop the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. There are things in this world that you and I can't stop, nor do I want to stop some of it. But there is also things that are happening right now that cannot be stopped. They've already been prophesied to happen. Thank you for mentioning 
Pearl Harbor. Thank you for doing that. 82 years ago, Japan made the dreadful mistake of attacking the United States at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. I've often thought about this so many times. Why in the world did the Emperor of Japan do that? What was he thinking? And and he never he never dreamed. He never thought that he never he underestimated the American spirit, the ingenuity of the American people and technology. And he underestimated their the will to stand up for what's right. And also, let me just say this. He blew it for Hitler. Hitler had Europe beat. They, it was over. Put a fork in him. It's over. You can't stop him. He was going. He had already taken over most of Europe. And as long as the United States didn't get involved, if the United States never got involved, this would be now. Europe would be basically a super, uh, uh, you know, it would be some type of hybrid Nazi Germany, European situation that would be so disastrous. I mean, it would have been the worst thing that ever happened to humanity. So if Pearl Harbor doesn't happen, America doesn't get involved, and Hitler conquers the world. But once we were involved, and once God's hand was upon the West, you can't stop it. We went all the way across the globe and hunted the Germans down and run them right back into Berlin and stomped it out and took care of the Japanese while we were doing it. I don't know why the European... I I, I just don't know why the... I just don't understand why why that emperor did that. I just don't know what his rationale... Did somebody give him some bad advice? Was he just living in his... uh, kingdom and not knowing the clue was clues to the rest of the world i don't know but it happened 82 years ago and thank god for every first of all i want to say it's sad that we lost a lot of folks that day i mean over 2300 people died at pearl harbor it was a terrible massacre but you saw what it did it brought the fortitude of the united spirit the united states spirit out to stop evil aggression and these 1,400 people that were killed in Israel the other day on October 7th, what do you think that did? It brought the fortitude. It brought a reason for them to make sure this never happens again. And that's what you're witnessing. And I don't care how many people stand up and down and jump up and down and scream and wring their hands in the United Nations. I could care less. Because you can't stop it. There's certain things you can't stop. Thank God that when Jesus went to the cross, thank God when Jesus went to the cross, that no matter how much the devil yelled and screamed, and no matter how much they mocked him, and no matter how much they they spit on him, and no matter how much they railed against him, they couldn't stop it. They couldn't stop him from giving his life to redeem the world. I'm not condoning. Did I say I'm condoning the killing in Gaza? Can I just ask you a question? Don't s- jump into my chat room just before. I- I'm When I'm getting ready to bring up a guest on, please pull this person off. The- just get them out of my chat room. Solly, whoever you are, go away. I never once said I condoned it. If you've ever listened to me, I've said a thousand times that there's innocent Gazan, uh, Palestinian people who are dying, they're caught, and it's not their fault. It's not the Israelis' fault. It's Hamas's fault. So here I am talking about the grace of God and everything going on, and you got to jump in my chat room and tell me not to condone something. I say go away and come back next week with a better attitude and a better approach. Thank you. Mike Frown World's going to be here any minute. Get a cup of coffee and... You can't stop this. You just can't stop what Jesus did at the cross, what he did to set men free from sin. You can't stop it. Christ, his love, his compassion, his hope is for all humanity. The Bible says, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul is just a man. It's amazing. The test of our faith that we will face. Are you serious, folks? Is this Mike from around the world? Pastor Paul, how you doing this evening? <laughs> Feeling pretty good tonight. Um... Wow, we've been talking about a lot of hard, heavy hitting stuff tonight, Mike. How are you? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Busy as usual, but well, pretty good. Okay, I was gonna ask you, which you what are you more busy with right now? Venezuela attacking Guyana? Uh <laughs> Putin. Venezuela's a big deal. Yeah. That's a big deal. Uh, Putin running around over in the Middle East all of a sudden. Who let him out? Um, you know, uh so I mean look, there's some serious things happening. Let's start with Venezuela. You want to? I mean, what's going on there? Well, we can. You know, it's a it's a long-standing uh, dispute, I guess you could say. But there's but there's one uh, nugget okay. about that place that is uh, important. It is a strategic location, and uh, the USA can't afford for uh, you know that land to be consumed right. by anybody who is not uh, somewhat uh, controllable. Because that's a, that's the back door to this nation. Yep. And um, well, yep. we're going to have to do something about it. And I believe that uh, you know, in about the way things look, and within a week's time, we will be involved. So I mean, obviously, we're stretching ourselves kind of thin, like. Uh, but we're going to use a. We can use technology. We can use drones we can use uh, special ops we can do all kinds of things to help get involved and shore this thing up can't we first of all we can go over and help the guyana strategically or militarily train them we can do some stuff right yeah we can uh you know there are enemy forces down there too that's where this whole thing stems from this is a big deal and it's a big deal um i don't think anybody's gonna really pull out the uh, nuggets of what's happening there but uh Oh, in other Putin words, is there. he's yeah, there. Yeah, okay. Is there. In other words, this isn't all about Nicholas Manduro. He's the right. puppet. He's the puppet for Putin, and maybe China is China there too. You better believe it. Okay. Um, you better believe it. We have some pretty big situations uh, happening right now, which could be the reason why the Senate voted down taking uh, the U.S. troops out of um, the Middle East. Ah, because. Yeah. Because we're dealing with, well, we already have the Israel issue. That's obviously a problem. We have right. Russia, Ukraine. That's an issue. That's big for Europeans and, and, and NATO. Um, we Russia's not just over there causing issues. They're also setting up shop, as you've told us, in Syria in a big way. Yep. Uh, the Houthis are going crazy, firing at every ship that goes by. That's, that's not good, is it? No. Um, in fact, um, Iran has increased its uh, proxy count in the Middle East right now. It's a dominant force in the Middle East. And it's not, uh, you know, in, in, in times past, they were somewhat manageable, right? But the numbers, they're too large. Right now, right now in, um, in Gaza, do you know you have Hezbollah members alongside uh, Hamas, right? And so what Israel has to do is shake everybody down. Because you you now have Hezbollah operatives with you're talking Sunni and Shia together, right? Fighting uh, Israel already, so they have made that move, and um, Israel has no choice but to really filter through all those individuals, right? To to because it's a it's a very delicate balance. I know it's highly distasteful, but uh, let's go ahead and face it: the Hamas and Hezbollah now in gaza now on a different front a new footing 
uh, Israel looks bad in front of the world because the world's not understanding that, it, it, truth be told, a lot of those individuals that are in that uh, territory are faithful to Hamas and Hezbollah, right? And a lot of those young kids fight. That's something about war that people don't normally understand, right? We've lost the uh, story of Vietnam. It all went away, but it happened there too when you had 15-year-olds, 18-year-olds uh, killing U.S. soldiers and French soldiers and all sorts of allies when, when they used to put grenades in, in the, um, you know, strap them around their own babies, right, and leave the babies somewhere where somebody could pick them up, the booby traps involved. It is a very similar situation <clears throat> in Gaza, and it's just not being publicized because it's so, uh, you know, people are so polarized right now through wow. media that you have an interpretation of the war of this conflict that's not even close to what's happening there right so you have many facts that are lost and people are using it for uh, some sort of sick political gain and it shouldn't be used that way once the truth is absolutely reflected it's going to be too late things would have already happened by then but um that story is is uh it is not a good story. So it really is not. A so good story. you're saying the information we're getting out of Gaza is not. We're not getting. No, it. it's not reflective of what's really, you know, what's really happening there. For example, if Israel starts telling everybody not through social media, but telling everybody directly, right, dropping leaflets and everything else, and they tell everybody to to get out of these two specific places, the people are stubborn. You know, the, some of the people are stubborn. They say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here and fight and do this. But listen, they have, I've seen the, I've seen the footage. Uh, often they'll tell people to get in body bags, kids to get in body bags, right? They will. They will always amplify whatever anybody sees to make it seem, you know, really, really bad. The numbers will come out. And it's, you know, there are casualties of every war. Of Every course, war. Of course. What makes this one so distasteful is that people are reporting on it every time they get a chance by way of their own opinion, right? Or, or by their own optics. And so as consumers of those images, people get polarized. They, they don't like uh, anybody who seems to be the bully. But the situation is you have an abusive organization called Hamas with the people of Gaza who are engaged in a fight with Israel, they're not gonna stop. Um, they're gonna keep coming back, right? More and more people are being converted uh, to, uh, you know, to fight or they're being coerced to fight. Uh, you have some that believe in the fight, some who don't, they simply have to fight because they're there. Right. They're utilizing right. every single instance <clears throat> that happens in Gaza to motivate people to fight Israel more. And Israel, if they stop, Right. If they just if they just stop fighting, period, it'll happen again in another you know five days. The same thing that happened before. The difference is Iran is positioning with Putin's assistance. They are positioning in the Middle East right now, big time. Uh, in fact, didn't Putin just display everybody saw Putin traveling different yep. places? Right. Yes, he did. But, but I hope the world wakes up. I hope they realize something. How in the world? With all these international bounties, with all of the uh, um, all of these actions against Putin, how can he travel unless the world is lying? I'm going to go ahead and say it: that international powers are not siding with the USA. Right? That yep. is one of the major problems. You cannot have a criminal going around all over the place and not be picked up or apprehended or something without the international community getting involved. But you have two people who travel with impunity, well, about four or five, actually. And so really, people should wake up and, 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 and realize something. If Putin is traveling all over the world, despite uh, you know all these, I'm gonna call them international bounties, then the, the global system is siding with Putin. Yep. Period. Yep. Or else, how could he travel? How could he get clear <laughs> airspace, uh, uh, just traveling on, on the ground, air, train, whatever, and and have no interference? That's impossible. If you're if you're wanted for anything, 
by the international community. So what right. we have here is we, we absolutely have the USA is isolated, right? The media, the media uh, is, is presenting things in a propagandized way that keeps the people ignorant of what's actually taking place. You know, they're making their money, but Pastor Paul, in the last 15 days, every billionaire went to go see President Xi. Right. You know that, right? Yeah, I do. Every single one. And, and if people look at the dynamic of what has changed in the world, the USA has what? What We have 735 billionaires, right? That's all right. At a, at a grand total of $4.5 trillion income for those guys, right? China has 562 that's, uh, billionaires. That's a lot. At a total of two trillion. Now, that's a reported number of those they know, not the ones they don't know. It is estimated that they have a little over us and billionaires. Elon Musk is the richest guy in America. Right. And he absolutely, they, they you know, they get together and they have these meetings. Why? They're, they're all rich. But why? Because they're setting global policy. Amen. Let's go ahead and face it. The government's not running anything. Nope. The government is controlled by lobbyists, right? Which yep. are these rich guys. Yep. And the rich guys are doing what? What are they doing? They're 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 going they're they're talking to President Xi too much, and he's all over the place. Yep. So he's not worried about anything, right? He's he's making uh, changes and alterations to all different countries, and the USA right now stands by itself, just like Israel. And they're they're you know from what's happening right now, and from the sentiment against Israel and the Jews, they're going to absolutely disarm. Israel. That's coming a little too quick. It's coming too quick. Yeah, you know, let's they talk, have, let's talk. They have no allies. Let's talk about that. Disarming of Israel. And I know you mentioned that last Thursday. So this is the second week you've brought that up. And I had people contact me and said, how in the world, what's Mike talking about? How in the world are you going to disarm Israel? Well, oh, they have to wake up. They, you know, they don't realize. They have to wake up quick. They don't realize who's, who is providing the arms to Israel. And if you shut, That's right. if you shut that, there's nobody else going to. United States is it. There's nobody else going to. Nobody arm Israel. Am I right? That's nobody. right. Everybody, um, all of them have backed out. They made that clear when this this war, this conflict is bringing out uh, is what everybody's <laughs> true sentiment against Israel is. Yeah. And so what do we see? We see everyone turning against Israel. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and say it. We see the Democrats in America yep. turning yep. against Israel, yes. being sympathetic to Gaza, pushing propaganda and not the truth. I know people think they have facts. The f- facts are not truth. It's not the truth. Facts are simple points of data, but those data points together in an accurate and, and decent moral way, that's the truth, right? Yep. Uh, all these yep. old data points can be used for big lies and propaganda is what they're pushing. Um, yeah. And and nobody is siding with Israel. No, and, you know, the Bible, and the Bible told us that that's exactly what would happen in the end times, that the whole world Literally, I mean, you have it. That's what you have right now. The whole world, other than the United States and half of our uh, government, don't want to support Israel. Okay, so that's right. yeah, it's it, this is unbelievable. We've that's never right. been here before, folks. It's no. it's open. Look at look at your Ivy League colleges. Look at you know look at the uh, Harvard and Yale, and and uh, you know Penn and all of them. Look at the. Uh, the anti-Semitism that is just absolutely off the charts. That's All, right. It's From students, students, the faculty, to uh, you name it, you right. name it. And it's because of this this narrative, right? This word Zionist and Jews and all these different words that they use. You know, it's almost like a Hitler spirit and so many right. different people. They're doing the exact same thing Hitler did. And Hitler, by the way, rallied the world behind a cause uh, to get Germany back on top again. Yep. Uh, and then he rallied everybody against the Jews. Well, we know what came next. And the exact same pattern is forming with the international community from Germany to the UK. Everybody has turned their backs on Israel, right? Yep. And Benjamin Netanyahu, he's, uh, you know, him and his cabinet, we know their targets, right? They're target number one. And we know it's only a matter of time. You, they're mustering forces in the Middle East right now. They've had, uh, the communication lines are peaking between China, the Middle East, 
and Russia and North Korea right now as we speak, right? They're peaking. There's a lot of uh, movement and activity everywhere. We had to activate our um, uh, part, of, part of the original air missile defense system, uh, the other portion of it in the Middle East in the last two days. And, and of course, Iran is waiting on our risk aversion um, assessments to come back. Now, what that means is <clears throat> they're gonna find out what our intentions are concerning Israel, based on those intentions, they are ready to strike right now. They've already talked to Putin. They've already had the meetings with their proxies, right? They already have support all throughout the Middle East and Saudi Arabia cannot be trusted. I, I wouldn't trust them with, with um, I wouldn't trust them. I, you, in the Middle East, when it comes to Israel, they, they truly do stand alone. It's going to be a painful, obvious fact. They're going to present it to people with a silver tongue, and people are going to start feeling sympathetic. If, if Satan can cause people to get their attention off the entire picture and have them focus on the one tiny thing, here's a fact. Uh, Gazans are dying. It's unfortunate. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Every single day, yes. U.S. forces it is are very dying. Sad. Yes. Our guys are dying every single day. No one's mourning them. Right. They're not mourning U.S. soldiers. No. Nope. And do you know why? Because nobody is publicizing that U.S. soldiers are biting the bullet that they're dying for their country or cause that nobody is is talking about. No. See, if they don't talk about it in the news, it becomes oblivious to the people. The people don't think about that. And by doing so, they're starting to change the sentiment, the heart of people towards these weird, ridiculous, and, and just obscene things, right? Which is causing a great weakening in America. This is where all this division is coming from. I know. I want you to think of this, think of this past ball. The more people become sympathetic to the causes of these tyrants all over the world, the more division we have in this Amen. nation. Amen. Amen. Right? Yep. I mean, it's, it's directly correlated. So we know that at the heart of this, yes, it is spiritual. Unfortunately, it is spreading, and people can't see the spiritual components of what's happening. Darkness is spreading like it never has before. Amen. As a Christian, as a believer, uh, wherever a believer goes, they need not worry about it. I, I can say that with the utmost confidence because I walk like that every single day. But where Christians are not, where that influence of Christ is not, there is absolute darkness already. And it's growing. It's, it's building. Why? Because people are becoming sympathetic to tyrants. And they're really starting to, you know, uh, pick up the causes of these people. So in America, you have people saying, you know, Israel is wrong. Israel is this, that and the other. Right. Yeah. And they, they're bad, but everybody else is good. No, that's not right. They have to put <laughs> things in perspective. They do. They I know. Do. I know they do that. It drives me insane. I can't believe it. I, I, it shows me how blind, but it also shows me how powerful the propaganda machine of our there media is. And there not just our media. Now I see the university, top university uh, professors, faculty, presidents of universities, how that this uh, this uh, really anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-Israel, this m anti-marriage, anti-birth. Uh, we could go forever here. How this is it, being shoved down the throat and being is being ingrained into the minds of our of the next generation of leaders. We we've got a problem here. It's not just America. This is a global thing yeah, that's taking and it's, place. You know what? It, it's a uh... It's deeply embedded down because if you, if if one generation lives by way of a lie, right, the next generation it is truth, not a lie. The, at the same, you know, there God mentioned abominations. Those yep. same abominations have been made legal. I know they've been made legal, and people they uphold them, yet they say they're still crit. Oh, I got news for folks. What's in a <laughs> what was an abomination to God in the beginning it's is still, still abomination. an abomination now. Right. Yeah, it and didn't those, change. You know, God didn't change. I mean, why? No. you know, look, he put it in play. He showed us. He told us the law was to show us what sin was, but the law wasn't good enough to save us. That's what Christ came. But he doesn't change the law. He didn't go That's around right. changing against the abominations that he already established. That's right. It's crazy what's going on. Man, man is immoral. And so guess what, Pastor Paul? The alarm clocks are coming. 
Amen. You, you know what an alarm clock is? Tell me, please. An alarm, an alarm clock is when, um, you know, we lose an entire city. When the UK is under nuclear threat, that's an alarm clock. When Europe is overrun by all types of the Islamic Brotherhood that just formed again, right? This yep. is their tactic. Yep. They will take Europe. They're yep. going to take they're Europe, take it. Dis, despite their defense buildup uh, that they're having against it, because they they don't see it coming yet. They're overrun internally, right? By that influence, they will take it. The UK is in trouble too, because if you if you stand on the side of of the principles of Christ, and all of a sudden you come up and you just openly start declaring Satanism all over the place, because it's a, that's what's happening. I know you have the leader of that place is is uh, heralding right this next era of Satan. You have people in the U.S. Amen. doing the exact same thing, and these guys are doing that. So then God's graces are not with those folks. And if a Christian is not found among those people, kapoof, they're going to be gone. Right? They're going to be Amen. gone. So the wake up calls are coming. They're yep. coming. The and then God's go people off. will finally start to remember, oops, well, maybe, you know, there, there are actual consequences to things. It, it's a, in my opinion, it's a good thing, and here's why. I'm a realist when it comes to spiritual things. Okay. If a person dies, they don't die. I already know they don't die. They transition. Everybody does, and Christ right. controls that. All right? He has the keys of hell, death, and the grave. Nobody is passing this world till Well, he going past him. Right. That. That's right. And so... Whatever he does is part of his will, and as it increases, it's going to start getting people's attention. They're going to be forced uh, to start to look and say, well, you know, there, there are consequences. Things are happening. It's going to be undeniable. Uh, the caution is at the same time, Satan is going to build a type of immoral utopia for all those who want it, which is what he's doing now, right? Yep. Clearly, that's what he's doing now. It, it, in fact, it looks like all the tares are being gathered together in these corrupt <laughs> groups. They're being gathered together. Yeah. And the righteous are being stuck on the outskirts of everything else, right? That's what it looks like. And with the heat factor that we have in the world right now, people are not ready for the fires. Um, they're not ready for the fires let's, let's, that are coming. They're, amen. they're Let, just not. Let's go, let's go down that path a minute because— you know, you've talked to us before about the sun uh, is is going to implode, or it's or the the photons are going to get sucked out with the hydro the hydrogen, and there's there's a yeah, we're going to have a photonic exchange exchange. Yeah. It's yeah. it's coming, yeah. and we're already watching the sun now. Again, today the sun is volatile, and now there's this solar flare, I guess, headed toward Mars. That's outrageous. It's going to hit it on uh, December the 11th. We don't know what it's going to do to Mars. It's not the first time, but I mean, the sun is becoming unbelievable, and and you've talked about it many times. And that effect on our planet, we can't stop it. Uh, you know, Peter told us it's going to eventually just completely consume it. But there's some prophecy yeah. before that happens. But still, certainly, we're moving quicker toward this. Can you help explain to people? what it means by the sun imploding or 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 what's going to happen a, pho a photonic exchange is yeah. when it's already been observed uh, multiple times that in a in a system with more than one sun when they're when they're close in proximity as far as celestial distance is concerned the whatever sun is that's brightest right it will often begin to redirect its photons, um, the other stars will actually start to suck the energy out of the radiant star, right? And it will start to recharge. They recharge this way. In fact, there is a cycle that in a system, binary system, for example, uh, I believe we're in a binary system, that, you know, every few thousand years or, or tens of thousands of years, the second star will make its proximity approach where it can actually interact with the forces of the primary sun. And at that moment, as it gets closer, the, the, the color of the suns, the star will change because photons are going to be pulled into this very dense object that's swinging by very fast, which means in our case, we're going to see a change in the sunlight. We're going to see a change in the sun itself. We're going to see a change in the activity of the sun, as we discussed 
we discussed this past fall women's this this was uh, the beginning of the year yeah and now now we're the sun seeing is doing it. because i said these exact words that the sun it it's its seasons would be untimely meaning it would it would wake up in times it should be dormant it would it would have uh, you know flares and cmes would become a constant they would become normal and then before you know it we're going to see light redirected to the other star right they this has already been observed when you say the other and, um, star, the other star you're talking about the binary the, the binary the one that's coming, coming in by. that's right okay, okay it will start to suck material off of our sun wow right right and w when this takes place um when the photons are redirected in the beginning we're going to have a lot of infrared heat right infrared will still point at the earth it's going to cook us believe it or not the, right. the bright light that people see that reaction uh from from other types of photons is almost like a safety net to keep us from burning up it diffuses infrared but in the absence of certain wavelengths you're going to have infrared cooking the earth so we're about to get very hot well and very dry, and we were right? told that in i think the 16th chapter of revelation we were told that men would be scorched they'd be scorched and they yeah. would gnaw their tongues for pain so this is going to I'll happen while we still have people here Right. I tell you what, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. because it's all the. I, here's my belief. Here's my belief. Okay. That process, right? We're going to see hints of that process beginning this year, right? This year, right? In wow. fact, as soon as people can go outside again, they're going to see effects from this. They're going to see a change in the color of the sun yet again. They're also going to feel heat like they did not feel it before. In other words, it's going to be um, it's going to be very invasive. Right. Here's the you scripture. Outside. Here's the scripture. You talk about it. It says that in this is Revelation, folks, 16, verse eight. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. So. <laughs> And think of this. Yeah. Think of this, Pastor Paul. Before that happens, right? I believe before that happens, the sun has already because when you read about in in the trumpets, right? Yeah. yeah when yeah. all the green grass is burnt up. Yeah. What is more? What is more plausible in this case? There, there are two types of burn. There's burning by fire, right? And burning by a type of dryness, a type of you know the sun yeah. beating down on things. Lack of moisture, a lack of moisture. Right. right. So in this buildup, because in every single case in observed systems, it's a buildup. You know how long that buildup is? That buildup is about twenty-three years. Okay. Right? Okay. So imagine humidity at ten percent for about a good fifteen years. You would have no <laughs> nothing would be alive hardly. I mean, it would be like a desert. Nothing. Uh oh, Mike from around the road just got cut off. Uh, maybe he's getting into some areas that the uh, that the NSA don't want him to go. We'll wait for him to call here. This happens to him uh, occasionally, but let's get let's let's try to see if we can get him back in the same path. He'll call here any second when he realizes they've cut him off. Uh, it's it's quite extraordinary what we're talking about tonight. We can't stop it. But we can prepare for it. We can't stop these things that are prophetically already told us that were going to happen. But we can pray over ourselves, our body, our family, and we can prepare for it. You know, because we're not appointed under wrath. And, and even before the wrath of God's poured out, which will be gone if you're a believer. And some of you watch right now aren't believers. Maybe you've never had a relationship with Christ. Maybe you've never been born again. I want you to know there's great hope for you tonight. We'll wait for Mike to call back in. He may not even know he's cut off yet. Or they may have disconnected him for a few minutes. Um, you know, Mike is uh, works for the federal government. He'll tell you that. He has many times. And uh, he's allowed to, to be interviewed by us here on this show every week. And um, he can't say anything that is classified. Um, and he does his best to give us as much info as he can and help us uh, for us to then read between the lines. It's good that we have a Bible that helps us along. 
All right, we're still waiting on him, and he has not resurfaced. Uh, I'll try to call him. See if I can get. Okay. So, Mike Around the World is still out there, and uh, I'm sure he'll call back here any moment that he can get back on a secured line. He may be moving it to a different secured line, or he may have been uh, told he's done for the night. Uh, that That's only happened one other time um, in 10 years, so I, I would say he'll be back. Um, yeah, they monitor. That, and so let's just say that. Let's just do a, a full disclosure here. They, the government, does monitor this Thursday night broadcast. They've already told us that. And they allow us to talk, and they watch to see how we respond. And with us to now is Mike from around the world. Mike, you there? Pastor Paul, yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't. They, no uh, idea. Yeah, I figured was, you, uh, you kind of got disconnected there. I don't know. I mean, you're just was, talking about the sun and the, I don't think it's anything uh, uh, not classified. I mean, I don't think it's anything classified here, are we? Well, it's it's not a lie. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> you're preaching truth here. I think you're allowed that, aren't you? As long as it's not classified. <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, that was odd. Anyway, all right, anyway, all right, all right. We won't go too far if you don't want to here. If you if they don't want us to, but I say we do. Okay, all right. Because I'm, I'm game. Here's why. Here's why though. <laughs> okay. Because. The entire point is those conditions okay. are abrupt when they begin, right? So it's not like it's th this this heat problem that we're having is is very obvious. I know they have their their explanations, but everybody how could a how could a how could a guy from the how could anybody know what these conditions would be so far in advance? How could that happen? I don't know. And uh, you know because these things have been observed, right? They're not telling everybody the true history about this planet. No, uh, they're not. They're not disclosing celestial issues and real threats that we have and impending threats that are going to sting us bad. They're not talking about. Uh, they're not warning anybody about the pertinent things, right? They're still no. talking about these situations they can't control. In fact, the rule of thumb is if you can't control it. Don't talk about it. That's, that's, the, the, that's the rule of thumb. Yeah. And so, but they can't control a meteor storm. They cannot control a photonic exchange and material no. exchange no. with the sun. And this will be observed when the sky looks like it's on fire because it's gold and people don't see clouds and they start seeing sustained plasma conduits hit the ground. And when people go near it, Whoa! Uh, anybody who goes near those things are going to incinerate. That's almost like sustained lightning, but it will be plasma conduit. Did they, when they, the orbits, they just said ahead. there's okay. The, and I don't want to break your train of thought, but they just said that there's a a plasma. I don't know the exact words headed toward Mars right now. That came off the sun. It's going to hit Mars on uh, the 11th of December. And they said it was plasma. Now, plasma is a whole different thing than just CMEs. I mean, that's a that's a whole, it's like liquid, oh, I don't know. It's why when the lightning strikes, it, it just scatters because it's like it's right. a conduit, right? And it's a, it's a, it, it starts, lightning is, is a, is, is just sustained just for a moment. And of course, thunder is the sound of the lightning. That's okay. the sound it makes as it breaks the sound barrier okay. and connects, but it is it is a representation of plasma, right? Okay. It is a it is the 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 uh, a form of matter, but when we have sustained plasma conduits, in fact, in the ruins on this Earth, when you see a triangle uh, on the top and a triangle on the bottom, that's not a person. Those are sustained plasma conduits. They have been observed on this planet already, Pastor Paul. Wow. Uh, the, I believe that the the longest one that I knew about was about two, three seconds, about three seconds. Wow. And so we know that, you know, as the atmosphere continues to charge, as the dryness comes, right, that electric potential in the atmosphere static is going to be off the scales. It's going to be off the scales. Um, the governments of the world know this. They know this. The power companies know it. And they know what they're really preparing for. 
right? That's why they came out with the new transformer technology. That's why they came out with the new fuses. That's why they came out with the uh, new air check system, because they're checking static discharges of the atmosphere. That's why the cell phone towers have something that is not an antenna on it to actually utilize some of that power in the, in the um, uh, 5G transmission system. Right, they're using atmospheric power. That's why people are going to see spheres put at the top of every single building. All this stuff is going to begin to happen because they're going to utilize it as best they can before it just, you know, they know what's about to happen. Mm. They already know what's about to happen. Mm. And um, by the way, all these billionaires that talk to President Xi, yep. these are tech giants. Yep, these are tech giants. You're talking about people who control what physicists. Is going to get out there and really make some money and who's not uh, those who put the ideas forward they need ai to solve some of these issues and my goodness it has it's a it, ai has already altered the world right this world is not what it was a month ago it is not <laughs> and i'm sure that we'll have our discussion on that but ai has altered everything already all medicine uh, technology and everything is altered, right? And, and the sad part is that most people are not aware. They could be aware, but they're not aware. It is reactive and interactive. It's everywhere. Nobody's going to turn it off. They want AI everywhere. One of the major discussions, uh, yeah, what was it yesterday? Microsoft talked to President uh, Xi, you, you named it, about AI, right? And yep. about technology. Yep. Now, why would, the, why would the head of Microsoft do that why why would they do that because they know about china right, right? right they know that china has its own form of ai they know that iran has ai nobody's going to put ai back in the box right uh, we could sit down and have a class and we could i could show people how to make neural nets and within a week they can have an, their own personal ai i mean this is the world we live in right wow now, right really so it's already out of the box. That genie is out of the that box. Genie it's already is out solved. Of the bottle. Yep. It has solved 12 diseases. Uh, pharmaceutical companies have the formula to do some miraculous things right now, which is why you guys are going to see many lawsuits start to put these families, these pharmaceutical families, out of business. They're going out of business. They're going to be prosecuted to no end. And why are they going to do that? Because they can't allow a pharmaceutical company. Uh, to be the lead in having a cure for something people look for for so long. Cures are out there, and it's a product of AI, and that was done in one week's time, right? So like the cancer, let's just there. say some cancer is yeah, no doubt. just like cancer. Yeah. Just like cancer. It, it's going to be a thing of the past. I mean, a real thing in the past, real solutions, not experimentational. Solu We're talking about real, real solutions, right? right? Uh, it's already done. Flight dynamics, uh, transportation is altering. There's a fight over the batteries right now. Lithium will be extinct in less than, um, you know, come the new year. <laughs> so there's what's a, the new a battery? Type of energy source out there. So, but, but what is here, that? here's the problem though. Here's the problem. Okay. Power and industry, right? Power and industry. Uh, people die over that. Yeah. Yes, they do. A lot of money. So oil, they're going to keep oil running. Yep. They already have viable replacements for just about everything that just popped up with AI, right? And it's not really getting rid of one over the other. It's utilizing them in a way that nobody ever thought of. That is extremely efficient, right? All this stuff is coming forward, whether they want to or not. And so what they're trying to do is get ahead of it so they can, so they can funnel all that creation into one controllable avenue is what they're doing right, right now. That's going to cause big wars. Uh, just to let you know right so now, is it's this, going to cause is fighting this, on a brand new level. So this is part of the problem. So in other words, you're saying the reason there's going to be this battles over control, who controls the technology, is because if you let the technology be free, let everyone do and let, let entrepreneurship, let uh, capitalism go, Things will get solved everywhere. There'll be great inventions everywhere. So this new world order, you got to create a one world government. It's the only way you can control it all. You got to have one world central government. And think of this. And think of this. It's already free, Pastor Paul. But so how do you shut it down, right? At its location, you have to control every avenue of communication. Yeah, you do. Folks, it's coming and it's coming quick. Fast. It's coming yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. That's why they pushed the new iPhone out there. 
right? That's why they're gonna push other, like Samsung, all these manufacturers. They have altered and changed that technology for this funneling of this technology. They have to control communications. So people can forget about manual logins pretty soon they're on. Right? Yeah, I expect uh, that. That's gonna be out there. And they have the power units in the mark. If, if the power unit's in the mark, right? They can power, your body produces enough power to, to run quite a bit, right? To charge you know my how phone? To harness that now. Can I charge my phone with my power? Sure you can. You put out much, you put out a lot of power. Everybody puts out a lot of power. The body, in fact, is 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 near 100% efficient in converting food and air and water and everything else into usable energy. They just never had a way to tap into it. Now they do. So Now they do. So now it's almost the Tesla technology times on steroids. In other words, AI has figured that out. AI has solved yes. and, and yes, solved it in so many, yes, so, it has. so many molecular levels, yes, it so has. many uh, wavelength <laughs> levels. It's not even funny. So somebody's got to control all this because if you don't, how is anybody going to be able to make – too many people will go broke and too many people will make, become billionaires overnight if somebody doesn't control that from the top. So they're going to funnel it. So yeah. get ready. Get ready for the most confusing time in human history right um very violent it's going to be violent in a lot of cases they have to control technology all the governments and rich folks have been getting together solving this issue they're going to funnel everything and they have to do it yesterday which means I'll, I'll say it again i could actually sit down and teach people how to build a neural net on their phones a, a system that will learn every single day it's their own personal artificial intelligence system you know how to do it. Just you, like know, your brain. you know how to do it. Yes, I do. And and that can be a person can do that in less than about 15 to 20 minutes. Right. They may not understand it all, but they would certainly write all the code for you it. You could write a code, uh, enact it, and it would begin to learn, collect data, for teach me. itself, augment itself, change, and then rewrite its own code as necessary. Right. All that can be done until it runs out of space in memory on a, on a phone or a device or something like that. So that genie's out of the box. You can't put that back. The only thing you can do is control communications differently than what you've been doing. So this the log in to the Internet and, and, and uh, all this freedom that people have is going to have to be funneled. It's going to have to be altered. Right. So, Which means a brand new what's called an IPV system is already in the pipe. What, what, so, what is that? I what? Let me write that down. But, well, it's just like IPV6. Uh, these protocols that handle how your computer talks to other computers on okay, the internet, how okay. it connects and how everything talk, else. Yeah. Biometrics. You might as well say biometrics, biometrics. and make it simple for everybody. Yep. It's going to have to be fully integrated into the system yesterday, right? Yep. And, and th here's what that will do. It means... Any user of a computer is going to have to be identified or they can't, they're not going to be able to send a transmission. So they already have the packet exchange system rewired and everything else ready to go. Devices are programmed for it. Legacy systems, um, they're going to have to update or use some of the slower mechanisms to do that. But they're still going to have bio uh, idents, right? They can push, they're going, they're going to push this. They're going to force this. This is going to be forced, and um, but it makes hacking impossible. The only way a person is going to be able to hack in the future is with an AI assistant. Wow. That's the only way. Wow. So biometrics, of course, is going to be uh, uh, DNA or irises, the eye, or, or – It'll be the full package. Everything. It'll have to be a, <laughs> probably be everything, be right? Proof, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, in, in fact, at Passball, they can pull your DNA without going into your body. They can do that now. Hmm. Okay, uh, the Brain Initiative that began in 2007 led way to a lot of techniques to actually extract or read your DNA on a surface level. Right? That AI has last year AI solved the rest of that problem. Right? To actually begin to decipher all of the hormonal signals and everything else that comes out of your skin all the time. Right? So they already have that. Uh, and it's going to be forced upon everybody, right? The compliance is going to be so do you see a this, necessity. So this is taking us to the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 13. It will. There's no it doubt. Will. No doubt. It will. It most certainly will. It most certainly will. And if you're not part, if you don't agree, in other words, they, they can do it to you whether you like it or not, okay? But if you don't agree to be a part of the system, 
they'll cut you're you out. You're not a citizen you're of done. anybody. That's, yeah. you can't, what can you use? Because everything will you be funneled nothing. through a control system. You will not be able to buy or sell anything That's because you says. cannot use the system. And, you know, right? think about this. John saw that 2,000 years ago and wrote that in the book. That's amazing. It's That's incredible. Amazing, it's it's amazing. incredible. Well, I, That's amazing. It That's is amazing. amazing. Especially when you have, when you can see the technology um, of what they have out there, what's what's ready to go on the ground, ready to go. It's fulfilling it. Just, it. It, uh, it, it just, it's, we're, we're right there at shouldn't that we, moment. Shouldn't we now become more, our faith be stronger now that we see that what was prophesied to happen, we actually see it being done? Watch I, it. Pastor, I mean, that is my prayer. I really do hope that people are taking their salvation seriously. You know, God put people in place, yourself, other folks that do the same thing you do. Mm -hmm. God put you guys in place for a reason with an anointing. You have Satan's little agents that will try to, uh, they try to rattle people every once in a while. Right, right? they do, they do. But, but, but the only way a person can continue doing that is with enthusiasm. Right. Because I'll tell you one, we're, we're going to know who's who when the system Amen. starts to alter and change. Um, people will know who is who. And, and the Lord has really he has given us a true gift in people. He really yeah. has. Yeah. I mean, yourself included, Heidi, you know, everybody who helps you out. God has given us some gifts Amen. if we would not take advantage of it, because a time will come and it's coming quickly when people are going to want to. They're, they're going to want to find somebody who believes in God for real. Yeah, because if they don't believe in Christ, they will have no defense because not only is technology changing, but I hope people understand that your, your brain, they already have that, right? They, they can already induce psychosis. They can induce things upon people from thousands of miles away. That's unbelievable. They can, they can already do this. They're not talking about this stuff. They're just not. And no. this is in the tech industry. We're not talking about some wrapped up uh, technology. You're not talking about we're DARPA. Talking about something real. You're not no. even talking about DARPA, are you? No, we're not talking about anything DARPA's doing. We're talking about what the civilian side is doing. Okay. I don't believe nobody wants to talk about what DARPA's doing. No. Because I'll, ta I'll, I'll say this. Everything with technology leads back to the gods of India. Wow. That's what it leads back to. That's, that's exactly what it leads back wow. to. Wow. Right. That's why you have that symbol at CERN. They, they know yeah. what oh, that yeah. is. They're, oh, not, yeah. they're not sure. It, it's most Shiva. people look at that as a religion. Right. Right. But I got news for you. Those are scientific books. Right. Their religion is the worship of scientific books to extract knowledge from other dimensions. They have been utilizing that. Right. Uh, was, everybody should be watching throw, Oppenheimer. Yeah. That's where he I got watched, his I information that movie. from. It was unbelievable. Right. Um, in India, I know that people have their different interpretations, but I mean, you know, what's etched in stone is there. I mean, it's there and they have tried the techniques. They've recreated many things based off those books. They encourage a reading of those books of yep. all scientists, yep. all of them. And, um, well, I was looking today at something, I was going to run it by you. I thought, no, I can't run this by him tonight. But Heidi said, you probably can. He'll probably know. He probably already knows about it. DARPA. This is crazy. Created a Stargate zip code for Earth. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they did. Okay. So why would you, I mean, in other words, they looked at the, the entire constellation or universes, galaxies. Well, Pastor Let's, Paul, li listen, listen. Okay. People have most of the fantastic things that people think about today. It actually began back in the 30s. Okay. Back in the 30s, when nobody was worried about anybody using high voltage. In fact, high voltage uh, really paved the way uh, to a lot of things mystique, only to find out it was not mystique. It was a way to access uh, different things, which is how they found out the Earth is in a bubble. Existence is wrapped in a bubble, and, and within that bubble, you have to negotiate with those forces to get outside that bubble, or you're not going anywhere, which is why every single craft, space vehicle, interdimensional pod, or anything else, uh, jump rooms, you name it, all that stuff has to be marked with Apollo. It has to have some sort of mark, the mark of Apollo on there, right? Yeah. Um, a god, a god Apollo. Yeah, movies, movies have... Uh, you know, where do these guys get these ideas from these movies? 
right? And why did a story like Stargate exist 6,000 years ago? Okay, so that's you're what saying you have to re- check. so the, that's why you're saying the reason we had the Apollo program through NASA it had to be named after this because we're we're actually working with ancient entities. Uh, am, I hate. Am I really? Yeah, unless you get unless you get permission. Yeah. I, I mean, I know I know this will just messes up everybody's paradigm, but I want everybody to think of something. Every single patch, every single patch, right, that deals with the sky is going to pay respects to Apollo in some way, form, or fashion. It will. It's going to have, an, there are going to be incantations on the vehicle. If not, that vehicle is going to be prone to destruction every single time, right? The only way to get gain passage is through some sort of witchcraft, right? Some ceremony that, that has been long forgotten. So these incantations, rituals, and rites that NASA knows about that the Germans bought over. These guys were devil worshipers. I know that people celebrate them, yep. but they loved Satan. Yes, they, they did. did. They love Satan. They, they had their interactions. And they bought that to America. And everybody over here in America loved technology so much they didn't care what they had to do to get it. And by the time they found out it was absolutely real, it was too late, right? So most of the offspring of those scientists are still there at NASA. Yes, they are. It's, it's up their lineage. <laughs> and they're still doing the exact same thing, which is why technology and all these movie stars and everything, all those go hand in hand because they worship the same. They know about Lucifer, right? They already yeah. know about Lucifer. And But look on every single craft that ever goes into space. And you're going to see the markings that pay respects to Apollo every single time. Wow. In fact, they took it a step further, right? In America, they pay respects to Apollo. It's in the architecture. In fact, it's in a statue. In fact, it's on a plaque that the statue points to, right? Because George Washington did not have a staff. That's been there for a long time. Most people don't pay attention to that stuff, right? They can't right. They, they can't understand, you know, exactly what that is. But they, you know, they teach us one thing. And then of course you stumble into the wrong career field and you find out they laugh at you when you call things by their name that you were taught they laugh at they you laugh. It's not they say is. you don't know what you're talking about right well it's just like what if somebody told you something was locked in the statue of liberty if it was chained in the statue of liberty that sounds pretty wild right? it's wild but you know anymore i would probably now in my in my life i probably say okay what, what all right what they lock in there another way uh, okay I, I, let me ask you because you're really on to something here because you know we've 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 watched these remote viewing type uh mk ultra remote viewing the montauk uh, systems you know we, we, we've seen these kinds of darpa things done but the stargate thing is the jump seat, you call it. There was a guy called, and, and I talked to him. His name was Daniel. He wouldn't tell me his last name. He was dying. And the reason he was dying, and this was about the same time, Mike, that, that I first met you, okay? So this has been about 10 years ago. And he said to me, Pastor, you, you don't know me, but if you would come and visit me, you would see, and you can come. And he, he asked me to come, and I didn't. He was in somewhere in Connecticut or New Hampshire or somewhere. But he said, I'm dying because I've been in the jump seat, and every time you go through the, the, the jump seat to the scar, Stargate, it damages you, and, and you don't understand. There's people been to Mars and back. You don't understand. The, 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 it's happening. It's something that's not even talked about, but I, I gave my life to Jesus, but I just want you to know there is stuff going on. You have no idea. So I'm thinking, Mike, is he way out there somewhere? Or Well, find out if he said, Jump seat or jump room? I, I I recognize that term, jump room. I can't remember. He might have said jump room. I just use if, the word if jump somebody seat. says if somebody uses, he jump might have room, said that. He right? might have. I don't know. They're not. They're not talking gibberish. I don't know what story he told you, but when somebody uses that term, that's that's not something that uh, that you just anybody of this time built. Nobody of this time built that. Yeah, right? it's the reason too- they. It's the reason why archaeologists uh, they get paid uh, by the government. Yeah. Right? And everybody cannot be an archaeologist because most of the findings, they will tell you what you can publish and what you cannot. And believe me, DARPA follows uh, all these teams around. But if somebody ever says, jump room, Pastor Paul, um, yeah, I wouldn't openly talk about what they talked about. I would never do that. But I also wouldn't call that person absolutely crazy. No. I wouldn't do that. I didn't because there was something about him that I felt by the Holy Spirit, 
that he wasn't lying to me. Yet I did not have any no any way to prove what he was saying was right. It was so out there, it's hard to believe, yeah. but the about there's something about when I talked to him, I felt in my spirit, I felt this guy's telling me the truth. I don't know what in the world he's talking about, but he's telling me the truth. Um, you know, I mean, I know they found they think they found the stargates, you know, in Egypt and and there's even some talk that maybe there's even a Stargate down there in Antarctica and that it might be the reason or one of the reasons. I, I think it may be multiple reasons that the world leaders went to Antarctica. And I think you and I have talked about this. They were scared. They're scared. They're scared. Aren't they? Fall, and they, that caused them real fear, right? Because it's a, a process that's underway. And pretty soon, uh, what, what was seen there. Will it, it be it revealed? Be, uh, There'll be no limitation. People will behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And they'll wonder whose <laughs> names were not written in the book of life. Whoa! I, you know, okay. that, that scripture, that yep. scripture right there, I'm, yep. I'm Pastor Paul, that, that is, uh, they're, they're, you know, God is so good because he's, he, for people who say, well, I'd like to see something like that. No, you do not. You don't. You do not want to see you anything want to like that. that because you cannot unlearn what you have learned. And once you're exposed to that, it can just crumble your entire existence. And so live innocent in, in the Holy Spirit and in good and, and, and have a smile on your face with, with a positive attitude. Uh, the more you know, the more it's going to smash you down in the ground, right? Because you cannot smile like everybody else. If, you, if to smile like everybody else would be, uh, and that would be, you know, a falsehood. Yeah. You can't smile when you know certain things about this earth. So the Lord, I, I believe this principle, though, uh, when we're ready to know something, the Lord will allow us to know it. Nothing yeah. will hold that back. Yeah. But he keeps things from us I'm gonna ask you, because he knows it can mess us up pretty okay. bad. Okay, so I mentioned you in my book, Revelation 9-11, because uh, you you've been too instrumental in uh, in our ministry over the years with, with the great uh, broadcasts as we have done together and the many people have come to Christ. I'm going to ask you, uh, this book is based on a, a vision the Lord gave me that the Apollyon coming out of the bottomless pit. And it's found in the book of Revelation chapter nine verse 11 and when uh the lord revealed this to me and i was started studying about many different things these that these entities that are released and it's in the book okay all kinds of stuff we talk about that's affecting society today yeah. but this apollyon character he does come out of, of the abyss he he's released and he and the lord said to me he's about it's about to happen it's yeah. about to come upon. So in other words, it hasn't happened yet. He's been there waiting, but he's For about to time. come loose. That's right. That's uh, right. Do you, your thoughts on that? Is that? Uh, I, well, first of all, I don't I don't think he's loose either because no one is going to mistake uh, the moment when he is. Right. right. Yep. And um, if it, darkness, the closer darkness gets to a person, the more they begin to do dark things. Right. They, they begin yeah. to do, they can't help themselves. Uh, irritation rises, anxiety rises, all these negative attributes, they rise. A person will begin to give way to negative emotions and actually push away the Bible, right? Mm. People are going to start seeing this a lot. And But what's unfortunate, Pastor Paul, is you're seeing this in the world, build every single day. There are places, for example, in the last four days, in places where there have been virtually no crime, people have been murdering people left and right in these. And I mean, just in places where no crime has ever existed, murder sprees are taking place. Right. Children included in America, not just with Hamas. I believe that um, yeah. it, it, there's a link uh, somewhere with Israel and us, M regardless of I know how Israel started. I know what people think, but they need to go back a lot further because God made a covenant with humanity right there in that spot for that spot. That's what that place is about. Not what happened in 1948. And that's what man did. But God did something long before that, which caused right. them to do what they did in 1948. That's exactly right. But um, basketball, there are forces that when they start being released, uh, the, the worst day a person has ever had, right? They're going to say, Lord, I wish I had that day back. Because I'll, I'll say this. I don't think that the average person knows what darkness is but they're they're gonna learn right they're gonna yeah, learn yeah these are when apollyon does come up he's gonna come up in his environment 
he's not going to be by himself. And and what invades the earth? There's only if you're not sealed by the living God, you have no protection. You, you will not hide from what's coming. They will touch every corner of the every portion of this earth. It will not be one room of any house not visited by those things when they come. So they're 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 not going to miss anything. Everybody will have their time. And the only defense anybody will have from that is to be a real believer in Christ. That is to accept his sacrifice, right? For the remission of sins that he shed his blood to believe in his story Amen. and to believe in Christ. You have to believe in his gospel. If you believe in Christ, but you don't believe in his gospel, you don't believe in Christ because Christ is the word he spoke. And the word he spoke is Christ. And so when people toy with their salvation because they think there are no consequences, right? If they're serving God to try and get something out of them, that's not a very good reason to accept what he did at the cross and to realize how distant they were from the living God as far as righteousness, to realize who he is and who they are and to say, Lord, I need you. I accept you. That's where it is. And when somebody walks in that, that is a lot of people say, well, you know, to become a Christian, you got to give up so much. I'll tell you something. When you become a believer in Christ, you have no desire to go back to the sinful things anymore your desires right, change right then you have a born again spirit Amen. in fact I'll, I'll tell everybody this fastball without a born again spirit there's no way i could ever walk in the slightest piece of righteousness i no, couldn't do it no the flesh is too corrupt it has its own desires its <laughs> own mind its own everything right but that born again spirit with a born again spirit you have different desires so don't let satan talk you out of the gift that gift that christ gave is a defense it is a promise it is a future it is a brand new life in eternity it's a brand new life right now it's something you can have now not to gain the whole world no but to be free from the anguish of sin god knows i know about the anguish of sin i know about missteps i know about all of that but christ is liberty Amen. he is absolute liberty Amen. and the things that are coming upon the earth they must come, but nobody who believes in the cross, who believes in Christ, nobody will, nobody who believes in that cross will endure the torments of Satan. Amen. They will not. Amen. They will not. Amen. Powerful words, powerful message, powerful word. We can't stop what's coming, but we can be uh, redeemed from Amen. it. Amen. Amen. That's, yes, we can. That's the message tonight. Yes, we can. Mike, uh, wow, uh, just mind-blowing, spirit-encouraging. I feel great for the words you spoke tonight. I really appreciate you tonight being with us. Thank you again for being on this broadcast, as always. It's always an honor, Pastor Paul. God bless you. God bless you. The honor is mine. Trust me. God bless. All right. God bless. Mike, around the world, folks. You can't stop it, okay? None of us can stop the things that are coming upon the planet. Even God himself can't stop it because if he did, he'd be lying. But he did make a promise, a promise that Satan can't stop. And that is if you call upon the name of Jesus, if you let Christ in your life, if you become washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, you break every curse Every curse of sin is shattered when it, with one drop of blood. And if you will give tonight, tonight's the night. Tonight for some of you. Tonight, tonight is the night that you can say, you know what? I got to get things right with God. I don't even know how much time I have to live. None of us have no promise that we'll even see tomorrow. Look, I've lost some people this week. I lost people, friends of mine, people I knew close in my life died this week, unexpectedly, heart attacks. Um, I've also had people this week healed of cancer. So it's like, okay, it's, it's, here's the deal. It's appointed a man once to die. It's appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment, okay? That is something, we can't stop it. But we can be ready when that day comes. We can be ready if the rapture should happen. We will not be left behind. We can be saved if we die tonight as we sleep. 
We can be redeemed by the blood of Christ. Please do something. Do something for me tonight. I don't really care about anything else tonight other than you getting right with God and you being saved and me being saved and all of the every one of these wonderful saints of God that are here tonight and the, the thousands of you who are watching this by archive. Let's not let's not wait another day because Jesus is coming soon. As this song plays, just type, I want to be saved. Just type. I want to be saved, and let me pray with all of you, all of you, in Jesus' name. He was saying grace over a Tuesday blue plate special. When the man in the next booth said, don't you watch TV? Don't you know that God's a myth? I hate to see you waste your breath. God bless you, Queen Bee. God bless you, no Anna. Use you talk to a ghost that don't exist. The praying man said amen and looked up from his plate and said, you may not talk to God right now, but there's gonna come a day. If you're a farmer in the field, praying for the rain, or you curse him at the gravesite, cause he called a loved one's name. You can thank him, you can blame him, either way you're gonna face him. Whether you believe in him or not. Here comes Brian and Cindy. In the end, everybody talks to God. The man in the booth went quiet. Cause he didn't have a comeback So he shrugged it off and he paid his tab He shuffled out the door And the praying man he prayed For the man who drove away Hoping he would see the light Before it got too late But how was he to know he touched an unbeliever's soul Who got that conversation Two red lights down the road If you're a farmer in the field Praying for the rain Or you curse him at the gravesite Cause he called the loved one's name You can thank him, you can blame him Either way, you're gonna face him Whether you believe in him or not Cause in the end, everybody talks to God A lot of people are getting saved tonight They're rededicating tonight Everybody talks to God You can thank him blame him either way you're gonna face him whether you believe in him or not because in the end everybody talks to god let's talk to him right now let's not wait everybody talks to god let's not wait till judgment to try to explain it to god we all talk to God. Everybody talks to God. You know, Mike gave you some very good comforting words. Mike gave you some great advice. To just, to not, you don't want to know. You don't even want to know the depths of the darkness of Satan. You don't want to experience 
the fact that he's a murderer from the beginning and a liar. Come to Christ and let him set you free. A lot of people are typing, I want to be saved or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. And and, and, and so I'm going to pray with every one of you. This is amazing what God is doing. And they're still coming. And they're still coming. And if you're watching this on the archives, it's a day or two later and you're just now getting a chance to watch it. And you're saying, man, I got to get saved. Type, I want to be saved. Right in the chat. Right, right in the comments. And we'll pray with you. I always go back and check them. And I've got other folks that go back and check them. And we pray. So you pray right now with me if you're watching. Even this is, whether it's live or not, here's another one. I want to be saved. Whether, whether you are watching this live or archived, this is your moment to be finally redeemed, forgiven of all your sin. And, put, and Jesus will literally, they put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm repenting tonight. I'm rededicating tonight. I'm calling out on the name of the Lord. I'm a backslider. I'm coming back. I, I've never been saved, Lord. I've been, a, I've been a skeptic. I've been a doubter. I've been a, uh, I've been a doom and gloomer. I, I didn't even believe in this. But, man, tonight I've been listening, and tonight something got a hold of me. And tonight I know that I don't want to take a chance on where this world's going. But I want to be a child of God. I want to have peace. I want to have peace that only Christ can give. I want to be set free. I want to be redeemed. I want to know that I know that I know that I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Wash me. Keep me. Protect me. Help me. I'm I'm just a human. But with you... I can make it to heaven. Father, I ask you to do this because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe Christ died on the cross for the sins of the entire world. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe he ascended to heaven, and I believe he's coming back. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith, in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I'm saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, precious name it don't get no better than that it just don't are you serious welcome to the family oh yeah i can still see us now on rupert lane road all dressed up from our head to our toe there's nothing that we love more than going to church Heaven on earth. We had some foot stomping, hand clapping, tambourine slapping. Whole church is rocking and everybody shout. If you're asking me, I'll tell you it's a fact. It just don't get no better than that. Charlie Brown's old guitar. Well, I wouldn't trade now what I got back then. Without a doubt, it can happen again. So tonight, let's have a revival. Right where we are. Somebody shout right now.
serious i'm so serious i'm gonna play another song what are you serious why not wait wait, wait. What, what, what's wrong is it pbt or is it me a little mission temple fireworks stand i saw a black man Said the end of the world is coming, so you better get on your knees. Today, bottle rockets are two for one, but salvation's free. He said, I quit my job at a big church where the milk and money float to sell cherry bombs for Jesus in a tent beside the road. I ain't in it for the money, no cars they pass on by, but I pay the rent on New Year's and the Fourth of July. Holy Ghost, Big Bang Theory, Big Bang Theory, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, Fire Brimstone, Fire Mission Temple, Fireworks, and He said fireworks are dangerous, they can blow up in your face, better read the instructions, light the fuse and get away, these things are made in China, so it's easy to see, how man who worships Buddha, Ain't got no guarantee This is the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Big Bang Theory Big Bang Theory Pentecostal Pentecostal Fire Brimstone Fire Brimstone Mission Temple Fireworks Stand Here we go! Bomb, it's ready to explode. When the trumpet sounds and the Lord comes back, I promise you one thing I'll be a human bottle rocket and I'll go out with the bang. I'll leave this Holy Ghost. Big Bang Theory, Pentecostal, Fire Brimstone, it's Mission Temple Fireworks Stand. I'll leave this Holy Ghost. Holy Mission Temple Fireworks Stand Mission Temple Fireworks Stand It's Mission Temple Fireworks Stand Oh, 
That's right. Oh, that's right. It's right. It's right. It's Bishop Temple Fireworks Stand. We're excited. I'm telling you, we are excited tonight. All these folks getting what saved. That? No, 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 no. Okay. All those people getting saved tonight. And uh, we want to tell you, we want to encourage you to get baptized. Find a pastor. Find a church. And tell them you got saved, you got born again, and you want to get baptized because it's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there's power in water baptism because it's commitment on your part and God's part. Okay, it's powerful. Okay. And uh, if you need a Bible, I'll send it to you for free. If you need one, just send an email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD. Zero one at hotmail.com requesting a Bible or if somebody's sick and they want an anointed prayer cloth it's got healing scriptures on it we'll send that to you it's all free the Bible's free the prayer cloths are free if somebody's very very ill we need to get a blanket to them we anoint those blankets with oil we pray over them and we ship them to whoever that is whoever needs to get them and and we do it for free all of it is for free and we can do it because of our faithful partners of this ministry, our faithful partners of Paul Bigby Prophecy Ministries. Thank you, thank you guys so much for being faithful because you're changing other lives. You're making a difference. Because of you, we can do what we do. We can uh, preach the gospel every day. Uh, we, could do, we could do anything without uh, the support of our followers and, uh, and make a difference in the lives of so many people. So many, you're touching so many lives. Thank you. We need your help. If you'd like to give a tithe or offering tonight, please do it. Help the Salvation Station tonight. Just simply go to paulbegbyprophecy.com and, and give your tithe and, and offering. And, you know, you'll be blessed. The Jesus already told you if you give, uh, it'll be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Men will give into your bosom. So send your tithe in. You can do it by going to our website at paulbegbyprophecy.com or you can also just call it in tomorrow if you want to call the main line tomorrow because everybody's asleep tonight so if you call tomorrow uh you can give right over the phone uh and uh or, or ac yeah it's somewhere in the phone number you guys know what it is 765-414-2230 or you could text give right there you can just grab your phone and text the word give to that number right there 765-722-2549 that's 765-722-2549 if you want to give that way. There's another way to give. Even It's called Easy Give. It's Try Easy Give. You just go to the Breeze, and, and there's the uh, online link. A lot of times Heidi puts those in the, puts those in the uh, emails she sends out every week. So check your, check your emails because there's always all the good information for everything that's going on in the ministries in there. And the links are easy to hit in there. And you can give that way. Okay? So do that if you would, please. Or just uh, go to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com and give tonight. And if you give your tithe and offering unto the Lord, I promise you. I don't have to promise you because God already promised you that he will bless you. And you're also uh, planting seed in the in ground of a harvest that wins souls to Christ. That is what our number one. It has been for almost 40 years now that I've been preaching the gospel. And Sister Heidi and I have been married 41 years, and we've been in ministry almost 40. It's been our whole life's work. And we've, we've, we've went through the ups and the downs. Uh, we've been through all the whole gamut, believe me. We've been through it all. But we're still standing, and we're standing with some great partners. So thank you, guys. We appreciate your help. Yeah, I'm coming to Columbia, South Carolina next week. I don't know what day it is. It, maybe it's next week or the week after on Monday or something. But they're going to post it. Uh, they're going to post it on my website. Uh, maybe by tomorrow afternoon we'll have all the dates and locations locked down so that we can meet you. I'll be in Columbia, South Carolina. I'll be in Charleston, South Carolina. 
I'll be in Marietta, Georgia. I'll be in Sevierville, Tennessee. I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Charlotte, North Carolina, and Jacksonville, Florida, uh, on this amazing Preacher Man Van tour that we're doing uh, and going to coming to you. And then, of course, we're going to do that. We're going to be going across the entire country. Of course, we got to space that out. I can't just go full blast that and still do everything else. So I got I got to learn how to space it out. With your help, we can do it. So thank you so much, and uh, God bless you. And thank you. If you'd like to give toward the Preacher Man Van expenses on traveling, uh, I appreciate that greatly. You can just send an offer and say, "Hey, this is toward your uh, Preacher Man Van," and just you could just say that Preacher Man Van. We know what it means uh, because then it helps us pay for all the gas and travel and what it takes to get to all these locations in the next few days. Eight locations in five states in seven days. We love you. We'll see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. I'll be live with you at some point. Keep watching right here on the coming apocalypse. It's been a great night tonight. God bless. Thank you all for coming.